it go. Well, good morning, good morning. I'm glad to see you. Good morning. Hoping everyone had a very nice holiday. And uh, now we're moving into the next holidays, I guess. It goes kind of fast, doesn't it? And tomorrow will be December 1st. Can you believe it? No. Wow. No. Yuck. I don't know where the year went. I just feel like I just floated through it somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know where the year went. Very strange. But everybody seems to be on the men's, and that's good, so that 22 can be a much better year for everyone. So we're going to do a little review here. Last week, we did tie a yellow ribbon on the old oak tree. And uh, we talked about some rhythm opportunities. Um, Hawaii, Hawaii comes up on song setup. I also gave you a suggestion. <coughs> Ukulele Luau. And also, I found the possibility of being able to use cabaret if you turn the tempo down. Of course, if you have an aria, then you have tie yellow ribbon. So you have the actual um, rhythm for that signature song. We also talked about adding the fill and making sure we hold on to the fill because we wanted to make it last for more than one measure. So if you just touch it, of course, the fill won't last. So you have to hold it into the first beat of the second measure that it you want it on. And once you do that, then it will complete the second measure. So that's how you work the fill. And I, I think that uh, a lot of times we don't spend too much time um, working with the fill as far as utilizing it because as Gary brought up yesterday or last week is that um, the fill the fill doesn't always repeat it has multiple multiple measures I think the longest pattern is either eight or sixteen measures of differences in the fill so you can really take advantage of that to make you sound great and you don't have to do anything except touch the fill. It's really wonderful. So who would like to play today? I've got it, Joni.
Good job. Very nice. Thank you. I liked your use of transpose. Thank you. I, I think at that when you took the rhythm off, you could go even a little bit slower and be a little more dramatic with it. Okay. Um, but very good. Very, very good. I liked your sounds. Real nice job. Nice. And hopefully y everyone was listening um, when Gary was playing because what you could see, if you were watching your music and then you were listening to what he was playing, you could see that he wasn't playing all even straight quarter notes. And we're going to talk about that again today in the song we're going to do, Michelle, because that's that's the way they have to write it. They have to write it equally. Um, how should I say? So you know how they do equal quarter notes, half notes. But that isn't the way you have to play it and interpret it. Um, and you, you're going to know the melody the way you know it in your head. And um, as long as you're still fitting it within the four beats, that's great. But go ahead and take the liberties of playing it the way you would sing it. And so they won't necessarily all be equal notes on a page, but that's good. That's fine. That's called interpretation. And um, it, it, it seems a little more human for us to play that way than to just keep everything, you know, real even, Stephen, and steady. So well done, Gary, on that respect, and we're going to take a look at that again today. Someone else like to play? Tony? Yes. This is LaVon. I don't have tie a yellow rhythm worked up. I didn't have time to memorize it. But I do have the song from a couple of weeks ago that we did, Take Me Home, Country Roads. Yes, and we never got to review that, did we? No, and I'm, the rhythm style that I'm using on that is the signature style, Country Roads. What is the rhythm style again, LaVon? Country Roads. Country Roads, okay, good. If you have that book in front of you, it's on page 284. <laughs>
good. Nice job. Very good. Thank you. Uh, you put you put everything in there. That was really nice. Did that um, rhythm that you started out with? Did did that give you a country guitar in the melody? I think it did. I don't remember. It, it didn't sound like a dobro to me, so I was just curious. I don't Not remember it what it sounded like. It was a country guitar. The only suggestion I could make for you is maybe utilize your fill a little bit more because there's a lot of measures where, you know, you have four, five, six beats of a hold. Mm -hmm. uh, insert the fill and let go of the right hand and let the instrument really sing for itself, which is kind of mm -hmm. neat. Okay. Okay. Very good. Anybody else? It sounds like you're all turkeyed out. <laughs> all right. We're going to Michelle. Michelle, my bell. Today. And this is a. Uh, I heard a lot of different versions of it, so that's kind of interesting. I didn't do a whole lot to it uh, because everything was kind of there, which was nice. But I do want to talk about the music map first to be sure everyone can follow that. Remember that when you see a set of dots, there's another set of dots somewhere in most cases, unless you're going all the way back to the beginning. Dots repeat within the dots. So when you come through the first section and you get to, um, here, let me get the, I will say the only words I know that you'll understand. And then it takes you back to, in my book, line two, where it start, starts Michelle Marbell again. And then when you come up to the second page for me, um, I swing over and play box number two, ending number two. And then it sends you back to the S sign, which is on the first page at the bottom line four. And you play that up until the first two lines. And it says two coda. And then you swing down to the next line, which is the coda that finishes the song. Make sense? Tony? Tony? Yes. Can you tell me what the chords are for the first line of page two? Because my music was cut off. Yes. Um, until I find that measure. Yes. D as in dog minor. Okay. And then there's the next measure, way. Yes. G as in George minor. Okay. And then the last measure, I will say... That is D as in dog minor. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So I have that problem too sometimes when I make the copies. Now, I didn't this time because I'm using the book, but I often lose the top line of chords and have to go back and check it out. So, okay. So, uh, yeah. could you please tell me what the last note in the first line is? I've only got three notes there. It's an F. F is in Frank. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so let me give you some things here. I'm going to go line one, measure three, the E flat note, and the lyric is that. I'm going to play a B chord there. B is in boy. And then the very next measure, go to B-flat. Just a little walk down there. We have C, then B, then B-flat. And that'll sound better. I do that same thing on line three. Measure one, the word is sunt le mo key. That's an E-flat. That I'm going to play a B chord there as well. Okay, up at the top of the second page, line two, measure one on the third beat, beat three, which is an A note. The, the lyric is no. I'm going to play a B diminished there. 
B as in boy diminished. And is then the, what the is next the... measure, it calls for G minor. I'm going to play a B flat instead. Sounds better. What is the chord for the first note in the first measure of line two? Um, it's a suggestion of D as in dog minor seventh. G minor seventh, okay. Okay. And let's see what else. Okay, so on the coda, the first line of the coda, measure three, the first note is B flat. During that rest, I played F, G, A, fast, diddling, sort of glide, not gliding, um, the grace notes that I put in, F, a G, and an A, and then come on the B flat. A little bit of a grace note there. Joni, I, I, this is Connie. I'm, I, I lost you on this last... On the Boy. first line of the coda, okay. measure three, instead okay. of a rest, I uh -huh. did three grace notes, oh, okay. F, G, and A. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. When you get in the beginning of the song, when you get to the first ending, that's where you should change your sound. Okay, when you get to the second ending, you want to change your sound there as well. And on the coda, I added harmony to it. We have um, several different rhythm st music style options. Um, eight beat standard works fine. Guitars four four works fine. Baroque is very nice, but you have to um, lower the tempo. It's a little bit too fast, but it's really a nice, nice background. And one of the reasons I chose that was because that's not a music style that we often use for a lot of different music. So I thought that would be something different. Trios Romantico works as well. Um, that puts a little Latin flair into it. So it really depends on how you remember the tune, how, whether you're going to want that Latin feel or not. My jury was still out. I didn't really vote on it. I just said, well, I know it works. But depending on the day you play it, you may want it or not. So I don't know. <laughs> this and is a Beatles song, right? It is a Beatles song, yes. Yeah. And then I, um, on some of those rhythm styles, the music styles that I just suggested to you, I wasn't overly excited about um, style setup sounds or rhythm preset, if yours is called that. Um, and I found that I fell back to one of the best of my favorites, which is love song category. If you have those sounds, they're amazing. So we'll feature the categories as, as well. And I'm trying to get you to do that a little bit because we have so many, excuse me, we have so many categories of sounds that are great. And uh, so we don't just have to settle for whatever comes on style setup or rhythm preset. You know, we don't have to settle for that because we have a lot of options. So, and the other thing I want to talk about for just a minute before I play this for you is I want to talk about recording. This is probably the most important time for you to record, and I'll tell you why. When you have company around the holidays, you don't necessarily have a great opportunity to sit down and play, especially if you're the host or the hostess because you're doing stuff. You're getting food and, you know, you know it, you're busy. And so what I'm saying is if you pre-record, maybe even it's in the background during dinner or lunch or whatever it is you're having, but if you pre-record, 
then they can still be hearing you play, but you don't have to be sitting at the instrument. And, and you know, as people have a good time around the holidays, sometimes they want to sing some carols, and you can have fun joining them and singing some carols. If you recorded some and just push the button and let it do it for you, and, and that way you have entertainment music right there provided for you. So this is a really important time. I'm still not convinced that there's a lot of people doing any recording, and if you're not, you're missing out because that's the best way for you to hear your entire instrument. You cannot hear it when you're sitting at it playing because you're concentrating on the right hand and the left hand and changing buttons and all of that. So the best way to be able to hear the instrument in its entirety is to record and play it back. And then you can step back from your instrument and say, wow, this really sounds great. So I would encourage you to do that. I think it's um, really important, especially at this time of year when you do get more company and, and people want to gather around and have socialization as well. Um, that's a great thing for you to have in your back pocket, so to speak, is some music, live music that you played and recorded um, that people can enjoy while they're visiting. So I would really encourage you to do that, get some of your holiday music arranged. So it doesn't have to be, especially the carols when people want to sing, that doesn't have to be sophisticated at all. Just play the carol. I, I, and, you know, if they want to sing two verses, play it again. They, they don't have to be real <coughs> sophisticated um, it's just a way, you know, people aren't going to sing with no music. So if they can hear the music, they'll join in and start singing. So I think this is a really important time. If you haven't done it before, I can talk you through it by phone, how to record. Um, but I really would like to see much more of you getting into that and playing your recordings in the class because we learn a lot from hearing other people play, not just me. Um, so that's a real benefit for the class to hear a lot of different interpretations of the same song and they'll all sound different, which is really fun. So get on the recording there and if I can help you in any way, I'd be happy to. I'm gonna do Michelle with, uh, I'll start with eight beat standard. And I'll play it in its entirety the first time. Um, let's see here. Eight beat standard. Uh, just so you can follow the music map. And I do want to check my speed. intro to and that that is my preference really intro to it's a little bit shorter but it seems to lend itself to um, the sounds that we want so I'm gonna start I'm gonna be in my love songs category and I'm gonna start with a balance flute and then we'll take it from there okay here we go ready <laughs>
And that, again, I used ending two there. And hopefully you were able to hear. Um, I should have really moved that. I'm sorry about that. Uh, hopefully you were able to hear a little bit of interpretation and a melody that it doesn't have to be all even, Stephen, as I would call it. <coughs> so I'm going to give you a little idea of guitars 4-4. Four, four. There we go. Let's see what our style setup has to give us. Yeah, that's pretty. Okay, here we go. And this is going to be intro one that I'll be doing. liberties. That's a liberty. That was Guitars 4-4. Four four. Now I'm going to go to Baroque so you can hear that. It's one that we don't use a whole lot, so I thought it would be nice. Here's how it comes on. So it's a little too fast for my liking. comes on at, I think, 112. And now I'm going to take it down to about 95. Because as you know, the Beatles, they didn't do this quickly. Here's the intro one. By the way, what chord do you play for the intro in this song? D. 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 Say, it, say it again. D as in dog. D as in dog. That's correct. Very good. That's important to remember. Okay, let's see how we do with this. I'm going to do a little orchestra with my orc plus turned on this is intro one too rough mm -hmm. too rough for the song so let's try <laughs> intro two that's more in line okay
like I said, you can also try trios romanticos, but only do that if you're in the Latin feel frame of mind because it is going to give you a little bit of a Latin spin to it. So, uh, And hopefully you were able to hear the liberties that I took with the melody. I'm still keeping within four beats, but I don't have to have all quarter notes equally. You can put your own personality into it. So um, that was just a couple of examples. It's nice tune. Which one, which rhythm music style did you like the best? Guitar 4-4. Four, four. I say that also, I agree with you, and the reason I do, because I think that has the closest feel to the Beatles. So um, I felt like that was the best one too, but sometimes people will, don't always like a strumming guitar background, so I wanted you to have other options as well. But I, I like the Broke. I, I like the Broke too. The Broke, broke is nice. It's a little bit different, but it works. So, yeah. So, you, whatever you use, love it. <laughs> Joni? Love what, 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 love is what the, you love and use oh, what yeah. you love, and no, then true. it'll come out happily. <laughs> Question? Uh, yes. Um, what is the last um, chord in the last line, first chord? Mine's not in there. Uh, I don't understand the question. Which the fifth, the fifth line in the second page, the first okay. chord. The very last chord. Yeah, the first chord in the last line. Oh, the first Be chord. Yes, before that, the GM. That is D, as in dog minor. Thank you. You're welcome. Other is questions? that first note in that last line on the second page an F? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Yes, it is. Any other questions? It's an awfully nice tune. It's very pleasant. <clears throat> and I don't think you'll have really any kind of struggles with it. So, no other questions? Wow, you're all brilliant today. <laughs> That's wonderful. So, be, again, reminded to look for your email coming through in the next couple of days um, that will give you the, the songs that we're going to do in December. Again, we're only going to have three zoom sessions not the week of christmas but i will put that in the email so you see that as well and then you can uh, make a make a note for yourself on your calendar and then if you want to email me which you can do at five zero six three at fletchermusic.com if you have a suggestion of a song you would like to do, email me and I'll see what I can do to use, use your idea. Now, there is criteria for how I choose the music to be able to make it a creative arrangement. But um, I was thinking the other day when I was looking through for the December songs, I said, well, it would be nice maybe if I could take someone's request like once a month and, and do that. So you're getting something that you would like to have arranged for you. So um, send me your ideas again on the email 5063 at FletcherMusic.com. If you have any request at all, I will certainly take it into consideration. It... Um, and we'll see what we can do in January to spice it up a little bit. How's that? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, it's great to see you. I'm glad you had a wonderful holiday. I'm happy that you uh, were here today. Um, looks like we're missing a few people, but I know that some people are traveling now still. So that's okay. 
and um, I th hope you have a really blessed week. And I will see you back here Tuesday on Zoom. How's that? That's hey. good. Good. That's <laughs> good. Thank you. My Thanks, pleasure. Joe. You're very Thank welcome. You, have a great day. You Bye. Take Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.